guys welcome back to vlogmas day number 10 we're actually filming this on vlogmas day 10 and it is 7 49 so you guys whoa Big's barbecue get into me we're gonna be seeing this like super late so i'm sorry about that but i actually graduated college today believe it or not and i was planning on filming and uploading this morning but that just didn't happen so i just wanted to apologize but today is day 10 and we're not giving up we're we are three-fourths of the way through we're not about to give up, okay? So today's video is actually going to be an inspiration video based off of Destiny Sidwell. Recently posted the 2023 book tag. I'm not sure if she's a person that made this. I'm sure somebody else probably made it, but I saw it on her page and so I wanted to do that. I thought it would be kind of fun. So that's what we're, we're gonna be going through 22 questions, which honestly I feel like there should be 23 questions just to go with the year. But maybe not. I'm just gonna hop into this because like I said I still have to edit this and upload today. So the first question is number one is most disappointing read of the year. Immediately when I saw this question I knew the answer was A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I am really sad to like say that. This was probably my most anticipated read for this month this year or yeah this year. I read Caravel or Caraval um, and the Once Upon a Broken Heart series in February, I think, and I literally could not stop reading it when I was, you know, first reading them. And I was just so excited that I had happened to read the series the same year that the third and final book was coming out. It's, I don't remember, I think I rated it a three star, which I think is still accurate. It just didn't really make sense. Um, the buildup that we had in Once Upon a Broken Heart and um, the, A Curse for, or not A Curse for Truth, um, A Ballad of Never After, the second book, it just was completely eradicated in the third book and it was just really confusing. I don't know. If you guys have read it, I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about. And I know that I'm not the only one with that opinion, which is so unfortunate because like I said, I was really looking forward to it. And it kind of sucks because she even pushed back the release date. And I know it was kind of a disappointment for a lot of people. It wasn't a bad book. It just, it was the most disappointing read of this year. Question is underdog book of the year. And what I thought of was a recent book that I've read. It's actually a poetry book and it's called Welta by Lourdes Figueroa. I believe that's how you say her um, name. This poem or this book was so good. It had a total of three poems in it. And I just thought it was beautiful. I really, really, oops. I really, really enjoyed it. It was, I feel like I'm just saying, you know, like, oh, say something different than it's beautiful. But it truly was while I was reading it. I was just, I could not stop reading, which she probably wrote it with that intention, with it only being three poems. Like, you want to read it quickly. But it was just, it was truly some of the most intimate and flowery imagery I've ever seen and she did a really interesting thing with connecting nature and the body all together it was it was very interesting there was also a good amount of the color purple in it which purple is like not a color that I find myself drawn to but for some reason I could not stop thinking about purple and how Figueroa um described it in that book so definitely recommend that one I will say I had to search for it like very int intensely on Goodreads so I feel like it's definitely underrated. It did come out in January of this year I'm pretty sure. So if you like poetry I would 100% recommend it. It was beautiful. Question is a book that was overhyped. I had a hard time picking a book for this so I'm not sure if my answer that I have is something that I like 100% agree with but the first book I have is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros. I personally rated this five stars. I, I did really enjoy it. Do I think it it like was worth the hype maybe not i think it fell off in some points and it probably like in hindsight it probably doesn't deserve a five star stars but while i was reading it i really enjoyed it so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it out of five stars but anyways um that was the first book i put on there and then i also had seven and a half deaths of evelyn hardcastle by stuart turton i absolutely did not like this book this book was so weird i don't even know it was just so much and I know I talked about it in one of my wrap-ups. It just didn't do it for me, which is totally fine. I think you rated it like one and a half, maybe two stars. So 
it was interesting but just not what i was looking for and so in my opinion it was a little overhyped is my favorite book couples of the year i actually only did one even though i liked a lot of the book couples anything by elsie Sil silver or debney perry love all of those characters but what i wrote for this one was jackson evangeline of them even though even though a curse for true love was not the best i do appreciate the other two books especially the second book that one was so good um, and I just loved them, and although the third book was disappointing, that does not mean they weren't my favorite couple, because they were iconic, okay? I love Jax, I'm obsessed with him, I'm literally in love with a fictional character. Anyways, next character is fave main characters of the year, and I decided to go with Peyton Gray and Kai Azur from Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This book was so good, we're gonna talk about it later, I try not to do repeats, but some books just have to be talked about for multiple sections. Um, but anyways, I really liked Peyton and Kai. They definitely fit the mold of other book characters or main characters that I've read before. And it's totally okay. I like, I've, I've read a lot of them because I like, I like that type of setup. Um, yeah, love them. Love Peyton. Love Kai. I also love Kit as her. So just like anybody in that book, I know technically Peyton and Kai are the main character, so that's why I picked them, but I also did like Kit, at least from what we saw from him in, in Powerless. This book is Book That Surprised You, and I went ahead and went with Hooked by Emily McIntyre. I got this randomly in the spring, and I got it because I think I had heard Alexa Ray talking about it, and it was the first dark romance I've ever read, and I definitely don't think dark romance is the genre oh actually that's a lie i think i have read a dark romance technically from penelope douglas um because i read credence and i read birthday girl and punk 57 i think those are technically dark romances but anyways i um this was like the first it just felt a little bit different it wasn't mafia but it was just it kind of was i don't know it was a retelling of captain hook or like peter pan and it's where the villains are the main character like the story is about the villain which i think is such an interesting concept and it actually genuinely surprised me because i i really liked the book even though it made me a little uncomfortable at times i overall liked it and i ended up reading the four other books i think she has published that are also retellings i think she has off the top of my head i know she does a retelling of the hunchback of notre dame or notre dame Aladdin retelling. I can't remember the other two, but I just really like how she does it and just be warned, they are dark romances. Question is my new favorite author that I discovered in 2023 and I have two of them. Debney Perry, who did the Eaton series and then Elsie Silver, who did the Chestnut Spring series. Those series were everything to me, especially the summer. I still have yet to read the newest book in the Eatons, Eatons, which I definitely need to do. Which also the fact that Elsie Silver's is the Edens and Demi Perry's is the Eatons, Edens. I feel like it sounds like I'm saying the same thing, but I am saying two different things. Um, anyways, they were definitely by far my favorite two authors, and I will be reading um, more from them in the near future, probably. I am going to talk about the happiest read of the year, and I believe that, that was probably Behind the Net by Stephanie Archer. This one was just the best like I just felt I just felt the most good with it it was truly like a light beach read I just want to giggle I want to kick my feet this is a perfect book for that um I also really enjoyed it because it was a hockey romance are you laughing at me I want to giggle I want to kick my feet <laughs> <laughs> isn't that a good way to describe it though yeah it is it's been a goofy fun <laughs> I love you um, anyways, so, what was I even saying? I don't even remember. Sorry, the hockey. Oh, yeah. Thanks, London. It is, it's a hockey romance, and I love hockey romances, or at least I love the idea of them, and so I really enjoyed this one. I, again, loved it. It's not, like, it's not great literature, I will be honest. Like, it's, like I said, it's just a feel-good. It's just a feel-good read. Just keep that in mind.
the next question is best adaptation of the year i honestly don't really know what this this question means i have yet to watch destiny's video so i don't actually know what she did but in my head when i think adaptation i think of it's a book that was turned into a movie or a movie that was turned into a book or a book that was rewritten I don't know if that's what this means, but I went ahead with Carmilla by Sheridan Lafanu or L. Sheridan Lafanu. Um, and the reason I chose this is because I know that there is a show and a couple movies. So I don't know if that's what the question is asking, so I'm sorry if it's not. But you guys should read the book anyways. It is incredible. It's a gothic um, romance and it's a sapphic romance. And it's it's incredible. I've written several papers about this book because I just find it so spectacular. Um, definitely one of my favorite classic novels for sure. The most frustrating book that I read in 2023, and that was definitely um, King Sol Solomon's Minds by Alan Quartermain. I did read this for a class, so I definitely feel like that aided in my distaste for it. But also I just didn't like that it was like, a colonialist, um, patriarchal, racist novel. Um, I don't know if the author was, but that content was definitely in the material or in the novel, and that's just not something I tend to be drawn towards. I am glad I read it because it's a classic, and I definitely learned some things about it, but it was definitely the book I was most frustrated with, I think. This and shortest book I've ever, or the longest and shortest book I read this year. The longest book I read was actually, it's technically not considered a book, but I read it twice, so we are counting it, and that is Manacled by Sin Lin Yu, which if you guys don't know, this is a fan fiction about Hermione and Draco. I did read it twice, and it is 876 pages. I read that twice. I don't really know how. It's incredible. In my head, that is canon. Like, that that happened and I live in peace every day knowing how that ended and I recommend it to anyone who has an inkling towards liking Harry Potter because it's amazing it's beautiful chef's kiss the shortest book I read was The Familiar by Sheridan La Fanu um again one of my favorite gothic authors this is technically a short story it was like 46 pages but it was particular or it was spectacular said it was particular. That's silly. This one was my favorite covers of, um, favorite covers of 2023. And my, the first thing I thought of was This Afterlife by A.E. Stallings. It was so cool because she actually came to the University of Kansas and did a book talk and I bought one of her books and it was just so cool. It was really, it was really neat. She signed the book and I loved it. I think the cover is gorgeous. As you guys can see, I think it's very, very neat. I think her friend actually did this art too, which I also just, I love that. I think that's so cool. Um, and then the other book I have is Magnolia Parks by Jessa Hastings. I read this book. I do know that the cover's rebranded and I, I'm not the biggest fan of those, but this original cover I think is so cool and I like it a lot. Moving on. The next question is a book that I haven't stopped thinking about and that book is definitely Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I cannot stop thinking about it. I want the second book so bad, especially how it ended. Are you kidding me? I cannot wait for the summer. It's going to be so good. I think the second book is called Reckless, which also the fact that the book covers are kind of going along with Elsie Silver's Chestnut Springs um, titles is kind of funny, even though they're like the literal polar opposite novels. I read that one, so maybe that's why I can't stop thinking about it. But regardless, cannot stop thinking about it. Question is cringiest book that I've read this year, and this is 100% Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. Now, I just wanted to say here, this book is coming up again, actually. I'll say it then. This is so cringy. I think I rated this book one star. That's it. Oh. Okay, the next one is unpopular book that I loved. And unpopular, this could mean like a lot of people don't like it. That's literally a definition of unpopular. But how I'm taking it is I feel like people don't know this book that much. And so it's unpopular in that way. And that is Recyclopedia by Harriet Mullen. This is a poetry collection. It is three um, 
it's from three different collections and she pulls pieces from each of them and then she puts it into one book and calls it Recyclopedia, which I rated this five stars. It is incredible. I think Muse and Drudge is my favorite section. That's the third section in the little book and it was just spectacular. I keep on using that word, but I'm just, I've been reading good books this year, I guess. The next question is, what was the highest and lowest rated books that I read on Goodreads? And we'll start with the lowest. It was Icebreaker by Hannah Grace. I ended up rating this one star. <sighs> Honestly, on my review, it says don't talk to me about this book because I just really, I really did not enjoy it. And I know that is an unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people liked it, which I don't really know why it's like, it hit me so poorly because I feel like I feel like behind the net is the same thing a little different but I think what really got to me was the fact that it was so long for no reason like it was so so long and I, another thing is like I don't mind when there are like some spicy scenes in my book I don't mind that but when the entire thing is that and it's like that's the plot that's not even a plot you're just you're just writing spicy scene after the next and i didn't really understand it i also thought the conflict was interesting like i don't i didn't get the conflict um but yeah it wasn't like i i do want to read her other novel that she just came out with in the same universe like it's not anything to turn me away from the author completely it just definitely was not my favorite ice hockey romance for sure this rating on the other end of the spectrum is Happy Place by Emily Henry. This book was incredible. This is my favorite Emily Henry novel, I believe. It was just perfect. It was literally everything. You guys have to read Emily Henry. She just does something. I was crying reading that book. I don't know. Read it. It's so good. This is really hard. It was my favorite quotes of the year. And I've read so many books with such great quotes that there's no way that I could just come up with like five of them because I, I don't know. I've read 105 books this year. I cannot do that. Um, but anyways, what I thought of is, especially because I just, I can't stop the. Hey now. Hey now. This is what dreams are made. <laughs> That's what you go to. <laughs> I guess so. I need to take a sip. Yeah, dry throw. Yeah, we're going to. Tell me. We're going to speed this up. We're going to speed this up. Anyway, <coughs> sorry, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> One quote that I settled on is from Powerless, and that is, you know, it's not the words that bother me, it's the meaning behind them. <laughs> it's that incredible pop. That was good. That was good. Four questions left, guys. Number 19, book with the most unique concept. I chose to talk about um, The Survival List by Kashana Kaylee. This book was basically about survivalists, if you couldn't tell. That's what it's called. I just have never heard of a book about that, focusing on people that are like doomsday preppers. At least that's not something that I usually read. Um, and so I thought that was super interesting. I also wrote about Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross because I thought the idea of a magical typewriter, that's so enticing and I wish I had come up with that. Like the fact that there would be three type typewriters and they're somehow magically linked to one another. Genius. How do I get one of those? How do I get one of those? Um, but yeah, that one was fun. Book that um, you read that you would reread. I went ahead and went with a book that I haven't really thought that much about, but as I was considering the question, I was like, I would totally read Done and Dusted by Lila Sage again, because that book was perfect. It was a small town, like horses were involved, like we're in a, we're in a small town and you're gonna fall in love. I'm being really strange. I recommend that. It was so good. This one was um, my reading goal this year and for next year. Like I said earlier in the video, I read 105 books at this point. We're only on, Dece it's only December 10th. There's still time to read. And we're 105 out of 100 books, which I'm so happy. I did not think I was going to meet my goal this year. So I'm very, very grateful that I made it. And I feel like I'm like reading a strange amount recently. But anyways next year i think my goal is actually just going to be 24 books 
and the reason for that is the past couple of years it it was 50 books I think and then I went to 75 and now this year it was 100 books and every year I've accomplished it but I just noticed that this year in particular this year in particular I have just been reading books because like I want to accomplish my goal and I think that can be good because you know you're like you're getting through your physical TBR you're reading books that you maybe have want, wanted to but I think it took a lot of the enjoyment out of reading for me and that is not something I want because reading is supposed to be my safe place and I like reading and so we want to keep it that way and so that was like I was kind of answering question 22 in that too which was um after 2023 reading what are what am I priori prioritizing in 2024 and like I said it's just like reading for enjoyment keeping the stakes low because I think I definitely fell into the trap of like just reading for the numbers but yeah I'm hoping this video gets up on time so thank you guys for you know just putting up with me sorry this video is way later than I normally post versus the 8 a.m. I usually post but I will talk to you guys tomorrow, of course. We only have two days left after this. And yeah, love you guys so much. Talk to you soon. Peace and love. Bye, guys.